In this video we want to solve the given fourth degree equation here and it's a polynomial equation. Notice the right side is zero and the left side is a polynomial of fourth degree. All the coefficients are integers. So what we're going to do here is uh, apply the rational zeros theorem. Now if this were a second degree equation we could use the quadratic formula the method of completing the square, or in some cases we can just factor if, it fact, if it's factored. So this is fourth degree. So what we want to do is find some zeros of the left side. In other words, a zero is simply a number that if you plug it in for x, it gives you zero. So this is a polynomial. We want the zeros of this polynomial because the right side is zero. So we could do this by trial and error find a number that makes this zero and we could factor it. We know that we have a polynomial and say r is any number and we plug r in for x and if we get zero obviously that would be a solution of the polynomial you have and also that would tell me that x minus r would be a factor. So what we're going to do now there's a theorem from algebra that tells you it's called the rational zeros theorem and we want the it has to satisfy these conditions we want integers here for the coefficients and we do have that and basically what it tells you is that if this polynomial has any zero so in this case we're looking for a solution but a zero of this is going to give me solutions it tells me then if that polynomial has any zeros of the form say rational zeros so they'll be in the form this like this pq then the numerator has to be a factor of the constant term over here 150 and the denominator q has to be a factor of the lead coefficient whatever this is in this case it's a one it's one so let's just do this then so fact we're looking for factors of uh, 150 so that would be 15 times 10. And we're looking for factors of the coefficient here, which is a 1. And all we have is plus or minus 1. So what are the possible rational zeros that we can have? So let's test them over here. So here we have factors for, for 15. That would be 3 times 5. The factors of 15 or in this case, it's 150, but we'll look at it individually here. Obviously, plus or minus 1 will work. Factor of 10, of course, which will be a factor of 150, is 2 or plus or minus 2. We want the negatives and the positives. And then 5 is a factor, of course, of 15 and 10, so it's plus or minus 5. And we put the 3 in there first, though, so plus or minus. Let me start this again. So we've got plus or minus 1, we divide the 150. 2 would divide the 150, so it's a positive and a negative plus or minus 2. 3 would divide the 15, so plus or minus 3 will work. 5 would divide the 150 or 15, so that would be plus or minus 5. So plus or minus 5. And of course 10 would divide, so that's plus or minus 10. Obviously 15 plus or minus 15. And of course, plus or minus 150. And then that's divided. All of these are divided by the factors of the lead term. And it's all, it's just one or minus one. So it's, it's going to stay the same. So these are the ones we, we would try then. So we could try, say, one or negative one. Put a one or negative one where the x is. Does it give you zero? And that's clear that it's not going to give you zero. Negative one is not going to do it. Then you plug in 2 for x, where the x is, does it give you 0? If it does, it's going to be a 0 of the polynomial, which of course will also be a solution to the equation, but it, it's not. The other way to do it is, next one, okay, so 2 doesn't work, let's write negative 2. Negative 2 squared to the fourth power is 16. Negative 2 to the third power is negative 8, and then a minus makes it a plus 8. 
and then on this one negative 2 squared is 4 times this is 124 makes it a minus and then minus 2 here gives me minus 50 and then we have the plus 150 and then minus 50 and 150 will give me 100 then 100 and minus 124 that's a minus 24 and then over here we have 16 and 8 is 24 that's 0 so negative 2 is a 0 or a solution to this equation we want to know the factors and if minus 2 is a 0 then x minus that which would make it x plus 2 x plus 2 would have to be a factor of this polynomial so anyway you can do it that way but the easiest way to do it is to use synthetic division so, so you simply take the coefficients make sure it's in descending powers and if there's any missing terms here we have x to the fourth x to the third term an x squared an x and then a constant so if this if the x squared is missing then the value of, the, uh, of zero will replace this in the uh, synthetic division so here's the setup then those are the coefficients of the polynomial on the left side of the equation 1 negative 1 negative 30 1 25 and 150 so what we do then procedure then this is just like dividing the polynomial by x plus 2 this is a we're, we're going to see if this is a 0 if this is a 0 then x minus this which, is, which would make it x plus 2 which is what I just said a while ago would be a factor so here's the way it works we bring this down coefficients and descending powers minus 2 times 1 is minus 2 take it over to the other side minus 1 and minus 2 minus 3 and then minus 2 times a minus 3 is 6 minus 31 and 6 is a minus 25 then minus 2 times a minus 25 is 50 25 and 50 is 75 then minus 2 times 75 is negative 150 now if we get 0 for this if we did 150 and a minus 150 is 0 this tells me that this is a zero which also tells me that x minus that or x plus two is a factor but we have one one of the solutions there now sometimes sometimes these zeros or solutions are going to be repeated so what you would do is try it again repeat the procedure and put a negative two here bring this down over here and do it again and if you get another zero then negative two would be a zero of multiplicity two but it's not in this case so let's go to another zero here Let's put a 3 here. And here I'm just selecting the ones that were possible rational zeros. If you don't get 0, then you, you go to another one. So I bring this down. And this is a 1 here. And 3 times this is 3. Bring it over. Minus 3 and 3 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. At this, we get minus 25. And then 3 times the minus 25 is a minus 75. 75 and minus 75, that's 0. So, so far, the zeros, which in this case would be the solution. So there's a solution. And I put that in a solution set. Obviously, negative 2 is 1. We did it manually, and then we did it by synthetic division right here. And then, of course, the 3 is also a zero now we could get continue here and select another one five or negative five or whichever but we once you get it down to a quadratic see here's uh here we have an x to the fourth right here for the first row, row here this one and then once you do one synthetic division it reduces to by one power by degree one so this will be then an x cube and then when you do it again it reduces to a quadratic so here I can just stop and say, okay, this is x squared. Instead of x cubed, this is x to the fourth here. This is x cubed, descending power. So here's an x squared. Coefficient is one. This is a coefficient of the next one of the x. Doesn't have it. So let's leave it out. And then minus 25. 
and this is what we have left. So then we want to know, okay, when is this expression zero? x squared minus 25 equals to zero. Just solve this one. Now, once you get it to this point, then you can go ahead and just factor it. The x minus five, just like solving a quadratic equation. x minus five and x plus five. This is equal to zero. That means one of the factors or both factors have to be zero in order for the product to be zero. So if you set each of those equal to zero and solve for x, you get x is equal to five and x is equal to, or x is equal to negative five. So the complete solution would be then five, negative five, and of course negative two and three. And that's your solution. Now it's fourth degree, it's a fourth degree polynomial equation. So you would expect at most four solutions. If you're looking at that polynomial and you're looking for zeros and it's fourth degree, then of course you expect four zeros. And like I said earlier, it's possible that the solutions could repeat. So let's say you have a polynomial equation factored out and it's fourth degree and it looks like this. Once you factor it out, well, solution for this one is x equal 5. x equal to 5. So it would be a uh, solution. 5 is the solution. Multiplicity 4. So it could be repeated. Now in this case, we have all distinct solutions. x equal, x and equal negative 2, x and equal to 3, or x and equal to 5, or negative 5. So that's your solution for this one. Fourth degree. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.